Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Maryland PTAC webinar. We are delighted to have you join us this morning. I'm your host, Yasmin Razak, and I'm the marketing and training coordinator here at the PTAC. Today, the digital event topic is marketing to prime construction companies, and it is brought to you in partnership with Prince George's County Economic Development Corporation. Today, we are going to be hearing from Alicia Moran, who is the manager of small business services at Prince George's County EDC, who is also our partner in this program. So we do appreciate their support with this. And then for the main speakers on the agenda, we'll start with Tyra Reedus, who is the regional vendor diversity director at Skanska USA Building Inc. Then we'll move on to David Fisher, who is a manager of supply diversity at Hensel Phelps. And then uh, last but not least, we will have a presentation from Susan Castellan, who is the vice president at the Writing Turner Contracting Company. So welcome to all our speakers. We will get started very shortly and you'll have lots of opportunities to ask the presenters your questions. The way you do that is by typing them in the chat box on your screen and we will pause at the end of each presentation to take questions and then again hopefully we will have time at the end of the webinar to do general q a a copy of the slides will be emailed to you after the presentation that's probably the most popular question i get asked on every single webinar so don't worry you will be getting a copy of the slides just to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and the replay will be available on the PTAC website and YouTube channel. So you will have an opportunity to watch it again or to share it with your business colleagues if you wish to do so. For those of you who are not familiar with the Maryland PTAC, it is our mission to help Maryland based businesses fully compete in federal, state and local government procurement processes. And what that means is that we offer individualized counseling and group training. Our services are completely free and they are confidential. You just have to be a Maryland based business to receive uh, counseling and anybody can attend our training. If you would like to speak with a counselor, please go to our website, which is mdptac.org and register today. If you've been counseled before and you need further help, please email your counselor to request another meeting. Okay, so that's enough from me and we're gonna go on to our first speaker. And th this is Alicia Moran from Prince George's County Economic Development Corporation. Welcome, Alicia. Thank you, Yasmin, and thank you, Marilyn PTAC, for hosting today's program and for being such a great partner as always. Um, welcome, everybody, and I know that there will be more joining us. I know that there were about 100 plus registered, so I, I'm expecting some others to be joining us. Welcome to the Marketing to Prime Construction Companies. Next slide, please. Um, this is part of our Pathways to Procurement series, and my name is Alicia Moran. I am the manager of Small Business Services, and my contact details are there. I would just say um, visit the PGC EDC website to learn more about all of the resources there and my colleagues. We have a great team of people at the EDC, and we're all here to assist you. Next slide, please. So Pathways to Procurement has been a, a series of sessions that we've done over the course of several months, and we've done these in partnership with the Department of General Services, with SCORE, with our Supplier of Development and Diversity, um, with MBDA, SBDC, MDOT, and the Governor's Office as well. So today we're pleased to be partnering again with the Maryland Procurement Technical Assistance Center, and I'm hoping that all of you here, if you don't already work with them, that you do sign up to get a counselor and begin to work with them. Next slide, please. So there's a wealth of resources. All those partners that we just mentioned are, are people that we work with to help get you information on becoming certified, on learning about procurement opportunities, on understanding what resources there are for minority business development entities, 
um, et cetera. And why, why do we do this? Because there are billions of dollars in procurement opportunities. And listed below are just some of the federal, state, and local agencies that may be procuring dollars, procuring um, services and products from you. And it's worth billions of dollars. Next slide, please. So Pathways to Procurement was really designed to help you um, get dive a little deeper and learn a little bit about business development, learn a little bit about how to use um, your certification programs, learn a little bit more about the different resources out there to help you as a small business owner, as a minority business owner, as someone working in Prince George's County or anywhere else across the state. So our goal is to educate, inform, and prepare local businesses so that you can gain more government contracts. Next slide, please. So what is the EDC? Prince George's County Economic Development Corporation. There are economic development corporations in each county. So if you don't know yours, please get to know them. In Prince George's County, we have a very dynamic team, as I mentioned, those that work with construction, manufacturing, um, those that are liaisons to the government federal agencies. We also work with um, companies to help them with site selection. We help them with strategic planning. We help them um, expand their business. So whether you're dealing with permitting items or you're looking to learn more about the processes in the county for growing your business or whether you're in another jurisdiction and looking to locate in Prince George's County, we can assist you. We have 15 federal agencies in our county and we have um, lots of resources to assist our local businesses. Next slide, please. So I deal with small business services, which means we do a lot of training and additional um, resources that we provide to companies. We help provide access to financing and whether that's traditional or non-traditional. In other words, FSC First is one of our partners as well as banking institutions, but we also work with the angel community and the venture capital community. We work with partners like SCORE, SBDC, PTAC, Maryland Women's Business Center, TEGCO, uh, the Minority Business Development Agency, and so many others, the local library system. Again, all to connect you to resources that you may need and leverage as a small business owner. We also introduce you to other business incubators. In the county, we have several local business incubators and we work collaboratively among those institutions to help provide services to all of our businesses. You're looking behind me in my picture, you can see Innovation Station, which is our soft landing um, incubator for international and out of uh, state companies, as well as a local incubator for our local businesses looking to grow here. There is a technology component um, to what we do at Innovation Station, and there is also um, some proprietary and unique uh, service offerings that are also part of the efforts and the and the services that are provided by our member companies. So just like our larger EDC, um, we here with small businesses, we can look over your business plan. We can help you as you're getting certified. We can talk to you about um, resources within the federal business procurement state and local resources in the procurement entities as well. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to who you really want to hear from our partners. Um, so last and foremost, I just say if you've missed some of the other sessions, please go to pgcedc.com backslash pathways. There you can see a, the listing of the programs that have been offered and the recordings of past sessions, which should all be helpful to you. So thank you very much. And I wanna thank um, my colleagues, Crystal, David Lewis, John Mason, and several others in our organization um, for participating in today's program. Thank you so much. And thank you PTAC for being our lovely host and our partner for today's session. And many thanks to all the speakers upcoming. Get ready, everybody, get your pencils out, be ready to take some notes. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thanks, Alicia. That was, that was a great, great uh, introduction there. Fabulous. And of course, uh, she's right. They're a, they're a great partner for businesses in uh, Prince George's County, and you know we do encourage you to take advantage of their resources. And thank you again for partnering on this. Okay, so over to our first speaker, and we have Tyra Reedus, who's a regional vendor of diversity director at Scanser 
Skanska, excuse me, USA Building Inc. Hello, Tyra. Hello, Yasmin. Thank you so much uh, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am excited to be here this morning. Um, and I promise I this won't be deaf by PowerPoint. Um, I do have a lot of slides, but um, that was intended really for the takeaway. So the slides are going to be sent to you, so you'll have all the information. But I'm going to, just going to do a high level uh, for each slide. Um, and Yasmin, please keep me honest on my time if I'm, I'm getting close to my time here. So um, as Yasmin mentioned, my name is Ty Aritas. I'm the Regional Vendor Diversity Director for Skanska Building. Uh, and I am responsible for the Mid-Atlantic, which includes uh, Maryland, DC Metro, and Northern Virginia. Uh, next slide, please. So quickly, this is just kind of uh, an overview of what I'm gonna talk about today. I'm gonna introduce you to um, the Vendor Diversity team for this region, um, talk about bidding opportunities that are upcoming uh, with Skanska, which I know is what you wanna hear, um, our bid process and pre-qualification, which is important to becoming a partner with Skanska, and then some other um, things and programs that I think you should know about, including our subcontractor default insurance program, our CSIP, and our diversity and inclusion programs. Next slide. So this is a little bit about Skanska for those who don't know. Um, so Skanska USA um, has three business units. Um, our parent company um, is in Sweden. Um, we call it Mother Skanska. Uh, so we have three business units building, which is um, the business unit that I uh, support. We have civil, and then we also have commercial development. Um, usually um, we are averaging about a million annual community investment and about six and a half billion in, in, in revenue from 2020. Uh, and we have offices across 28 metro areas. Next slide. So at Skanska, one of the unique things um, is that we have um, a team dedicated solely to investing and engaging minority and women-owned businesses. Um, and that's the team that I am a part of. Um, as you see, uh, Amy Cromus is our national director. That's my boss. Uh, I am the regional director for North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. Uh, and then Johnny also is my colleague. Uh, he is the regional vendor diversity manager for this region as well. Uh, and one of the things I wanted to highlight real quickly is just, you know, vendor diversity is very much aligned with our company values, uh, which you see there on the, um, on the screen, our care for life, act ethically and transparently, be better together and commit to customers. Next slide. So current opportunities, next slide. So what we have upcoming um, in terms of bidding with Skanska, uh, we are currently um, working on the Douglas MacArthur Elementary School in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, and there's a couple phases in GMPs to this project. So um, phase one or GMP one and GMP two have already been bought out and bid, uh, but we do have GMP three, as you see highlighted there coming up, um, probably I would say into mid July to August now. Uh, we didn't make the June date for that, uh, but that procurement will include the envelope fit out, um, some exterior play equipment and fields. Um, the construction timeline is uh, we mobilized in March of this year um, and expecting substantial completion um, in Q2 of 2023. Um, and as you can see there on the screen, um, there are contacts. So again, these slides will be sent to you. So you have these numbers. Uh, but the pre-construction lead is Tony Piera, uh, and the uh, construction lead is Joseph Kaifas. Uh, so please reach out to either one of those individuals if you have questions about uh, when the GMP3 might be coming out. Um, if you have any questions about uh, the bidding process, you can either reach out to myself or either one of those individuals. Next slide. Um, another uh, really important project we have uh, rolling out is our George Mason University project. Uh, and so this one we actually uh, got selected for uh, last year, um, but obviously with COVID, uh, a lot of the universities have had to reevaluate their funding, uh, particularly when it's state funding. Um, but the positive thing about this project is that it increased um, in budget from when we were selected for the project to you know now as we're getting close to um, procurement. Uh, so the budget started out at 53 million, it's increased to 68 and a half million, um, and also with that they've added another floor, so that's increased to uh, the square footage to 135,000. Um, this one is expected for procurement buyout in Q4 of this year. 
um, and then a construction start of Q2 of next year. Uh, and this, um, as you'll see in a later slide, does have a SWAM goal of 50%. Um, so we're certainly looking to partner with um, small uh, women um, and minority owned businesses that are certified as SWAM uh, in Virginia. Next slide. So how do you how do you bid one of those opportunities that I just talked about? So um, our exclusive bidding um, software is through Building Connected, and so you have to have a profile set up in Building Connected. Um, there is no cost, there's no charge to set up a profile. As you can see on the screen here, you simply go to create an account um, if you don't already have one, um, and input your company information and um, include your enterprise type if you are currently certified with any of the uh, regional uh, jurisdictions. Uh, and then that will create your profile and that will get you uh, into the, um, the bidding process. So whenever uh, bids come out for those projects that I mentioned, either Douglas MacArthur, GMU, or any other projects that we have, you will be included in that bid list and you'll get an email about bidding opportunities. Uh, and I see a question uh, in the chat. So it's SWAM, it's S-W-A-M, and that stands for Small Women and Minority. And that is the certification designation that Virginia uses um, for small women-owned um, and minority-owned businesses. And I can certainly um, share that information with how you go about seeking out SWAM uh, certification as well. Next slide. So I wanted to share a few quick tidbits uh, with everyone on, you know, how the best practices on how to bid with Skanska. Um, things I really want to hit on this slide are make sure um, that you are submitting complete documents um, and that you're providing all the information through your bid. Um, a lot of times when um, contractors don't submit a complete bid, um, then the the team will have to you know, put in plugs, so to speak, um, or assume information that's not there. Um, so certainly make sure that you're completing complete information. Uh, make sure that you're pre-qualified. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a minute because that is required before you can be considered a successful bidder with Skanska. Uh, and definitely reach out to our team. Um, so when you get notification of a, a bid opportunity, there will be um, an ability to communicate directly with our project planning team through Building Connected. Certainly use that platform to send emails and ask questions. And of course, I'm always a resource if you if you need some assistance with a, a bid opportunity or have a question about the process. Next slide. So what if I win? Yeah, you know, I go through the process. I'm pre-qualified and I'm the successful bidder. Um, I think it's always important um, to sit down um, with uh, Skanska and our team. Um, and define a clear, complete scope of work and make sure that you're including everything in that scope of work um, that needs to be included. Uh, review the payment processes thoroughly. Um, I have to say Skanska does a really good job um, at, you know, making sure that we are adhering to all the prompt payment requirements. Um, but you want to be clear on what those requirements are, because a lot of what we do is dictated by our owners and our clients as well and our contract with them. Uh, insurance requirements and subcontract signature execution. Uh, and another part of this too is, is making sure you're reading the subcontract very carefully. And don't be afraid to reach out if you have questions about any of the terms. Um, are we able to change all the terms all the time? No, but we will certainly entertain a conversation um, if you have you know, deal breakers um, or if you just have questions about any of those terms. Uh, and the other thing I want to mention here is, is also um, making sure you're coordinating your schedule and sufficient manpower requirements uh, for the project um, once you have been notified that you are the successful bidder. Next slide. So if you don't win, um, you know, this is a very important process, one that we are really working with our teams on, right, to make sure that this happens. Um, reach out and set up a meeting with our project teams um, in our project planning team to find out really um, what were the, the barriers or what were the things that prevented you from being the successful bidder. Um, consider asking for the successful bidder list, um, you know, to possibly come in as second or third tier subcontractor. There's always ways to continue to participate on a project if you don't win um, a first tier um, subcontract with us. Um, after leaving, you know, one of these D-scope meetings, uh, make sure that you understand better 
our process and what our team is looking for when they're evaluating bids, because that's only going to help you um, eventually get to the point of working with us and becoming a partner um, and stay in contact. When you make contact with our team, um, definitely utilize that relationship. They don't mind emails, phone calls to ask questions because we're always going to have other opportunities. Um, there's not a, you know, one shot with this. So definitely make sure you maintain those relationships because they're going to be able to guide you for the next opportunity. Next slide. Pre-qualification. So, as I mentioned, um, this is required for you to be the successful bidder with Skanska. Uh, and you'll see here, and again, you'll get these slides, but if you click directly on that link, um, that takes you to um, that web page that you see in the back there that says the pre-qual inquiry request, and that starts the process. So, then you will get an invita invitation from our system called TradeTap. Um, and once you accept that invitation, you can create your account and then start filling out the questionnaire and submitting all of the completed information. Um, and as you see there, Ellen Vajas, she is our prequal um, contact here in this region. Certainly, as you're going through this process, if you have questions, again, you can reach out to me or reach out directly to Ellen, or I can connect you to Ellen um, to address any questions you have with the process. Next slide. So, why is pre-qualification important? Again, I'm going to just kind of high level hit these. I'm not going to read all this to you, but for the subcontractor, uh, as I mentioned, it's the 1st step to partnering um, with Skanska for bid opportunities and it's required for bidding and contract award as well as our subcontractor. Um, uh, insurance enrollment, click it again, please. Um, it's important to Skanska, obviously, because um, it's an opportunity for us to align with like minded partners um, and it helps us find subcontractors that are a good fit for the project and the scope of work. Click it again. And finally, of course, for the owner, um, it reduces risk um, and it, it helps ensure an on time and on budget and on schedule project. And if you click it again. Uh, so, these are the requirements uh, for our prequal. So, we have um, single project limits up to 250, uh, and then we have another uh, project limit of 250 to 999999, um, and then um, a million and up. Uh, and as you can see, um, that is the level of information and documentation that's required for each of those project limits. Now, it, simply because you come in at 250 doesn't mean you can't ever get to the other levels. Um, certainly, there are ways to progress with your prequal, and in fact, our prequal team, our national prequal team, will actually sit down um, if you want to and talk with you and, and kind of chart out a plan on how you can continue to increase your your project limit. And they encourage that. They actually encourage contractors to continually seek to uh, increase your limits um, so that you can do more work with us and partner with us on on more projects. Next slide. And. At the bottom here, you'll see, um, you know, with the, the 250, there's an annual review of your prequal. Um, so that's just, you know, review to make sure everything is still in good standing and then your prequal will be renewed. Um, and then for the 250 to 999999, um, it expires 1 year from your date of approval. Uh, and then for a million and up, it expires 18 months past the period end date um, of the financial statement that's submitted. Next slide. So, these are just some of the things to be aware of um, when it's determined what your single project limit will be with Skanska. Um, obviously, line of credit and the amount extended, your working capital, payment history, references, and also safety performance. Um, that's one that gets missed a lot um, with some of our subcontractors. Um, definitely understand how your safety performance in the past will impact uh, your project limit and pre qualification with Skanska. And again, you know, happy to sit down with anyone and connect you with our prequal team and really better understand the prequal process uh, and answer any questions that you ha you may have. Next slide. Um, so I want to talk a little bit quickly about subcontractor default insurance. Next slide. Um, so this is essentially an insurance policy um, that we purchase, the Skanska purchases, and it replaces traditional subcontractor payment and performance bonds. Um, next slide. And, and this really allows um, subcontractors the coverage of a payment and performance bond without affecting their own bonding capacity uh, with their surety. 
Um, and of course, it allows us to be more inclusive uh, of small and minority owned businesses um, who either don't have the bonding limits or may not be able to get a payment or performance bond for a particular project. Um, and we do offer this SDI on most of our projects in this region. Um, not all of the projects will have this um, included um, in our GMP, um, but certainly I will tell you most of the projects that I have been supporting in this region, we do offer the SDI. Next slide. Um, then real quickly, CSIP, um, as you may be familiar with, um, OSIP is Owner um, Controlled Insurance Program. We have a, a Contractor Controlled Insurance Program. Um, and again, it, it's just a way to, to, to really make sure that um, everything is seamless. Um, it's, um, it provides cost certainty to the client, uh, with Skanska being responsible for all the deductibles. Um, and it's based upon the contract value, not payroll. And it covers all tiers um, on the project site. The, so that would include all tiers of our subcontractors for each project. Next slide. Um, and again, this is a lot of words and a pretty interesting graphic. Um, but what I want to point out is that, again, our CSIP program really allows for greater MWDBE participation um, because, again, it's providing those insurance Insurances for everyone on the project, um, and in particular, you know, we know some of our small businesses um, insurance can be a barrier uh, to your participation on a project. Next slide. Um, so, finally, I just want to go over um, commitment, our commitment to inclusion. Um, so, I talked to you about us having a, you know, a structured vendor diversity team that's focused on this. This is our day job. Um, so, we also have internal um, goals. So. Obviously, sometimes our clients will give us um, goals for the project in terms of small women or minority owned businesses. But Skanska uh, is really committed to this and this is embedded in our values. So we have an aspirational goal internally of 20%. So on our projects like Douglas MacArthur, because the owner did not give us goals, uh, we have that aspirational goal of 20%. And the same with our commercial development projects. Um, so CD is one of our big clients. Um, so building does all the work for CD. Um, and because those projects are, pr are private through our CD business unit, they don't have goals, so to speak. At least we haven't gotten there yet. We're working on that. Um, but we do have an internal aspirational goal of 20% and we accept all certifications and de designations um, for meeting those goals. And then, as I mentioned, the GMU project does have a SWAM goal of 50% and you must be certified by the Virginia Department of Small Business and Supplier Diversity. Um, and there's the link there. Again, these slides will be provided to you. Um, and you can check out that link on and find out how to get certified um, with SBSD uh, as a, a small women or minority owned business. Next slide. Um, quickly, uh, we do offer mentor protege programs, both informally and formally. This is our formal program. And I'll just note for you the picture um, on the slide there. Um, so you'll see Ryan Holt. Um, he was part of the, the Holt brothers. They were um, a protege of Skanska in our Durham office. Um, and that picture is actually a picture of a lot of our um, Sweden um, senior leaders. So uh, on the far right there on the picture, that is uh, Richard Kennedy. And he is our CEO um, of Skanska USA. Um, and then Anders um, is in the middle there, and I think he's the, he's part of the senior leadership for uh, Sweden, um, Skanska Sweden. Um, and, you know, Ryan was so excited to take this picture. So what happened is they came out to the project that Ryan was actually working on as a protege um, to tour it. Um, and he asked them if he could take a picture with him, um, and they happily agreed. Um, but this is just one of the ways that um, our, our protégés are able to interact with um, senior leaders in our company. Um, but we do offer a formal mentor protege program. Next slide. Um, also, informal mentoring, just quickly, um, these are pictures um, on the left there. That is a uh, minority owned business in North Carolina um, that actually teamed with our business development uh, lead in North Carolina. And she is actually working with them on helping them bolster their business development and really helping them grow that part of their business. Um, and again, that's informal, but she's meeting with them and she's also learning from them as well. They shared really good tidbits with her as well um, for business development growth. Uh, and then on the right hand side, blue bean training. So we actually had one of our pre-con directors in the Durham office. Um, he actually set aside a, you know, a few weeks 
to sit down and train one of our minority businesses on Bluebeam. They had uh, purchased the software, but didn't really know how to use it and hadn't had the time to really invest in the training. And so we offered that training to that business for free. Um, and our, you know, Skanska professionals are always happy to support in that way. Next slide. Um, finally, I want to talk a little bit about construction management building blocks, and that is our training program for small uh, women and minority owned businesses. Um, and really, it's it's focused on you know engaging, providing opportunity, and creating partnership. Next slide. So this is a a four to six or eight week course, um, and we we ask our Skanska professionals to teach a lot of the topics that you see there on the screen: project planning, BD marketing, HR, legal, um, risk management, technology. And in fact, we're actually in the middle of a a CMBB here in the DC metro area. Um, we just had our session number six last night um, on legal and contracts. Um, and so we'll be wrapping that, that cohort up soon and we'll be advertising for a new cohort probably at the first quarter of 2022. So definitely make sure that you um, share your information with me and I'd love to um, share that, um, that recruitment with all of you here to see if you're interested in participating in that program. Um, and we do have the ability to make that project specific. So if we have a specific project, we can craft a, a CMBB for that project. It can be industry specific, healthcare, life sciences, K through 12. Uh, and then we have an executive CMB program, which I'll talk about next. Next slide. Um, well, real quickly, this is these are pictures of the CMBB um, DC Metro um, class that's going on right now. Um, and as you see, those are some of the firms that are participating um, in this cohort. Next slide. So our executive construction management building blocks is, is an extension of the, the regular CMBB program. But this is really about matching our C-suite to um, a lot of contractor C-suites are smaller contractors. So these are firms, these are minority owned firms um, that they do pretty good revenue. Um, they've been subcontracting with us, but they're really ready to take it to the next level and do more priming um, on their own. And so this is a, again, six to eight week cohort, but they get to meet with our leadership. So for example, we had a virtual session uh, last summer for this program, um, and we had our CEO, Paul Hewins on the call, as well as all of our SLTs. So our CFO, our COO, um, VP of communications, uh, VP of risk management. Um, those are just the likes of the individuals that are on this call. And in fact, I, I like to tell the story that our CEO actually shared his cell phone number with one of these firms and said, hey, give me a call if you just want to bounce ideas off of me. So that's the type of interaction um, and engagement that you get through this program. Next slide. Uh, and I see a question. I, I, I'm sorry, no. sorry to Go interrupt. Ahead. I just wanted to find out, um, you know, if if there was there were many more slides. Just bearing in mind that um, we have um, two other speakers as well. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't go over absolutely. anybody's time. Yes, right. absolutely. Thank I you. am wrapping it up. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do any of these trainings cost? I see a question in the chat. Um, no, they are free of charge um, to the firms. Um, so there is no cost. Um, and again, this is just a picture of um, that executive CMEB cohort that I told you about from last summer. And if you look in the second row, third down, that's our CEO, Paul Hewins. Next slide. And again, this is just an example of the type of uh, success um, that we've seen from the firms who participate. So GMS is a company in North Carolina. And she began um, subcontracting with us in 2015. She participated in this program in 2016, and she's gone from 12,000 in um, revenue to 5.3 million. Next slide. Finally, key contacts for everyone. Um, this is my email address. Please take it down. I can also put it in the chat. Um, Melvin Clark, if you have any questions about pre-construction, any of the, the current opportunities, and if you have pre-qual questions, please reach out to Ellen or I can connect you directly to Ellen. Next slide. Thank you. Um, I flew <laughs> through that, but certainly everyone will get the slides. Um, and you can certainly reach out to me with any additional questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tyria. We do appreciate how thorough you've been, and I'm sure the attendees will when they receive your presentation.
Um, so thank you again for that. So of course, if you're interested in doing business with Skanska, please do reach out uh, to Tyra and her team. So now we're going to go over to our next speaker, who is David Fisher. He is the managing, ma sorry, manager of supply diversity at Hensel Valves. Hello, David. Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? We are doing just great. Thank you. <laughs> well, I don't know how I can top Miss Skanska. You know, she pretty much had my whole PowerPoint with her <laughs> her information. So we're gonna we're gonna get through this uh, equally. Thank you. <laughs> equally beneficial. So, so good morning, everyone. Um, as uh, uh, Ms. Yasmin mentioned, my name is David Fisher. I'm the manager of supply diversity for Hensel Phelps here in our mid Atlantic district. I've been with the company for 14 years in this particular role for about eight years. So, I'm glad to be a part of uh, this event and, and telling you all about the opportunities that lie within Hensel Phelps. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide also. So, for many of you who haven't worked with Hensel Phelps or know Hensel Phelps, uh, we're based out of Greeley, Colorado. Uh, our company was started in 1937 by Mr. Abel Hensel Phelps, uh, who started out as a small business. And, and that's kind of the root of our commitment to working uh, with our small business trade partners is because we know uh, what it takes to start a business and not only to start it, but then to maintain it. Uh, so, starting from humble beginnings, uh, starting as a small business, we've grown our company into a $9 billion uh, general contractor with companies or uh, offices all across the country. Uh, next slide, please. As you can see here, uh, we're pretty much in every part of the country uh, with our home base uh, in Greeley, Colorado. My current district being in Mid-Atlantic, which covers anything from Pennsylvania down to the upper part of North Carolina and as far west as West Virginia. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, recently, we are happy to, you know, with these uh, results uh, from ENR, uh, we went up one notch uh, from number 13 in ENR's uh, top 400 to number 12. Uh, and all of the other aspects you can see here. And again, you will get these slides. So I won't belabor uh, a lot of this information so I can get to the opportunities we have uh, with Hensel Phelps. Next slide, please. Uh, just another uh, demonstration of our commitment to small business engagement. Uh, what we take most pride in is the acknowledgement from our peers uh, by winning the ABC Excellent in Diversity Award eight times. It would have been nine consecutive times, but we didn't submit in 2014. So uh, we definitely appreciate uh, the acknowledgement from our peers. Uh, the Dwight D. Eisenhower is a federal award given out every four years to which every time we were able to you know, submit for it, we have won it. So that's 12 years of successful uh, small business procurement within the federal market space. Uh, next slide, please. So expectations, you can do next slide. So what makes us you know, so successful in, in this small business uh, contracting space is that we truly have an intentional approach. You know, we, we don't go after uh, connecting with small businesses just to check a box, just to get uh, awarded projects. We really want to understand who you are, uh, what you perform, and, and how we can help you become better and scale your business. And that really comes from our leadership, you know, our top down commitment um, from our CEO all the way down to our project superintendents, our project management teams uh, are all committed to working with our small businesses and helping them grow. And similar to Skanska, uh, we have a committed department that focuses on small business engagement, small business utilization, small business development. And that's all we do is focus on how to work with small businesses and help them become the next large businesses that we partner with. Next slide, please. So how do we do that? And, and what do, uh, how do we support those businesses? It's really building that connection, building that relationship. You know, when you work with Hensel Phelps, you're gonna, you're gonna hear this term a lot. It's all about relationships, you know, having those conversations, really uh, listening le more and talking less, you know, two ears, one mouth. You know, we want to hear what you have to say, because that's the only way we feel that we can really support you and put you in a position to be successful. Uh, we don't want to just give you a contract just to say that we subcontracted with uh, uh, a small business. We want to make sure that we give you the right contract so that you can make money, because that's what we're here to do is make money. 
uh, we want to make sure that you are in the right position to be successful, scale your business, and continue to work with Hensel Phelps uh, for many more projects to come. Next slide, please. So one of the ways that we do this uh, is through our technical assistance program. This is typically it's a day long event, um, but with COVID, you know, this year we had to do it over a seven day period. And that was really exciting because we actually got to expand this program to every other market within Hensel Phelps. Uh, traditionally, it was just in our mid Atlantic district, uh, but this year, uh, TAP 2021, we were able to spread this program out uh, across the country and be able to tap, no pun intended, uh, more small businesses uh, about the opportunities and how to best perform with Hensel Phelps. And that's what this class is all about, how to best perform with us, making those relationships, connecting you to our uh, supplier diversity team, our estimators, safety, quality control, project and field management, really being able to, you know, build that family and welcoming environment so that you feel that you're a part of not only Hensel Phelps growth, but we're a part of your growth as well. Next slide, please. So one of the aspects that we found out when working with small businesses, um, that bonding was an issue. You know, for any contract over $50,000 with Hensel Phelps, we do require a bond. And we found out that a lot of small businesses just didn't see the value in that or felt it was too much of a, a complicated process to take on. Uh, so we partnered with the Barber Group, uh, a woman-owned uh, small business out of the, the Baltimore area, and really put together a Head Start bonding program that really addressed some of those issues when it comes to bonding, either first time or, or um, enhancing your bonding capacity. And we found out that this was you know, a, a game changer uh, for a lot of the small businesses that we've worked with. Uh, one example is uh, Brendan Works, out of uh, Prince George's County, uh, Daniel Smith. Uh, we work with Daniel probably in, what year are we in? We're in 2021, maybe like 2017, I would say. And he didn't have any uh, bonding capacity. Uh, so he was working on one of our projects in Prince George's County uh, that Miranda Jackson uh, was compliance manager for. Hi, Miranda, how you doing? Good to see you, or see you in the chat. Uh, and we were able to help him build his business. And from that bonding capacity, uh, he got, four different projects uh, working with us. And he went well over $5 million of, of revenue generated from uh, this bonding program. So uh, it's had great success. Uh, more than $100 million have been put through uh, this program with uh, sub or trade partners uh, becoming bonded. And we've had great success for it. So if you're not bonded, uh, definitely take a look into it because it will definitely open up doors for you uh, in this contracting space. Uh, next door, uh, slide, please. All right, so the the grits, where are the grits at? All right, so the best way to work with Hensel Phelps, first thing you have to do, similar to uh, what Ms. Uh, Tyra spoke of, is get into our registry, get into our database. And one way you can do that is to go onto our website. Uh, you'll see on the top right-hand corner of the uh, website, uh, about. You'll click on the trade partner. Next slide, please. You can just roll through these. You just click, keep clicking. Uh, you'll go to, uh, you'll see a map. Look, slow down. <laughs> you go see a map, that's our Mid-Atlantic District. You would click on that. And if you wanna work in any other district we have in the, in the company, you can scroll across this map as well. Uh, but for opportunities in this market, you would click on the Mid-Atlantic District, next slide. And it'll take you to the registration process. It'll take you through the same thing that uh, Ms. Tyra spoke to about being in Building Connected. We're in the same platform. So the same instructions that she provided for how to set up your profile and get into that database, will be the same thing with us. Uh, what I wanted to point out is, uh, once you are in the database or you're looking for opportunities, uh, you'll click on the view opportunities tab. And once you click on that, next slide, it'll take you to the opportunities that are available in this particular market or any other market that you select on. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about uh, the record center. We're gonna talk about NIH. We wanna talk about WMATA, and we're gonna talk about the East Campus Building 3 projects. Next slide, please. So as mentioned, this is gonna be a very high level overview of the projects just to conserve time and get the information to you. All of this again will be provided to you not only in these slide decks, but I believe I provided uh, the PTAC with a PDF version of it as well. So you'll definitely have all this information, dates, times, points of contacts, things of that nature. So I'll, I'll just breeze through this real quick. Uh, the NIH campus uh, in Bethesda, Maryland, 
uh, we are part of the Mac that they have. So that's multi award contracts. Uh, and we have two of them with uh, the NIH campus. Uh, so we'll talk about a couple of those today. Next slide, please. So the two that we're going to talk about are the surgery radiology laboratory as well as the uh, new 40A building. Next slide, please. And as you see, they're all on the same campus. Uh, so for building 40A, uh, these are the details about that project. I won't belabor you by going through each bullet point, but if you have NIH experience or if you have healthcare experience, you definitely want to reach out to the uh, senior estimator who will be Steve Day for this particular project to get more details about this particular uh, opportunity. Next slide, please. Here are some of the dates for this particular project, a, a view of what it's going to look like. As you can see right now, we, we passed the, the planning phase. We're currently in the design phase and we're also in the bidding phase. That will uh, begin, they say 2020. That must be wrong because we're already past that. Uh, so we're looking at still taking on uh, interested bidders. Uh, so I would definitely recommend you uh, register in Building Connected and then look out and reach out to uh, Steve Day for these particular opportunities. Uh, next slide, please. These are the scopes that will be available. You see, we, we cover everything from division one all the way to, let's see, all the way to division 10 and 16 and 15. So uh, if you're a part of any of these scopes of work, if you provide these services, uh, please make sure that you reach out to us for this particular opportunity. Next slide, please. Here's uh, Steve Day's contact information. Again, you'll have this uh, in the slide deck as well as the PDF. Next slide, please. The next project on the uh, NIH campus is the surgical or surgery radiology lab medicine building. We like to put acronyms to stuff. So SRLM is the project you'll be referring to uh, when you're talking about this particular project. More details here, 650,000 square foot building uh, for new surgical and radiology lab on the NIH campus in Bethesda, Maryland. Next uh, slide, please. Times, dates, details. Let you look at that for a minute. Minutes up, next slide, please. And this is the point of contact. Uh, Mr. J. Withington would be the senior estimator for that project. Next slide, please. So now we're going into uh, what we currently have. You know, we currently have these projects in the bidding process and on the books, and we're and we're making moves to solicit uh, these scopes of work. We've had a couple of outreach events for these already. If you haven't been a part of those, uh, please let me know. You can send me an email. Uh, my contact information will be at the end of this presentation. Uh, so please let me know if you are interested in these WMATA projects that we'll be discussing. I can send you the PDF from the previous outreach events for these uh, particular projects. Uh, next slide, please. So this project will be in Northeast DC. It's going to be on Bladensburg Road, and I think by Bladensburg and uh, New York Avenue is a particular aspect of it. Uh, it's going to be part of another project that we did for WMATA on the Shepherd Parkway, which is Southeast DC right by Blue Plains Water Treatment Plant. So it's gonna be a, a, a project in Northeast DC, but there is gonna be a second phase to a project that we previously did eight years ago in Southeast DC. And it's gonna be a, a joint double project for this particular Bladensburg bus garage opportunity. Uh, next slide, please. For this project, we're gonna have regular DC prevailing wages, uh, this project will be a, a DBE certified project. Uh, so if you are a WMATA DBE, please add that to the chat just so I can get a feel for the attendees and the certifications that are available. And anyone in the on the call, uh, if you want to put down your certifications that you are certified for, MDOT, Prince George's County, WMATA, SWAM, MWA, uh, who else we got? MDOT, uh, all the other certifications. Uh, if you can jot those in the chat, that'll probably be helpful for us as well. Next slide, please. Here are some of the highlights and, and, and key milestone dates for this project. As you can see, we plan on completing this in 2026. Uh, so that gives us about five years until this project is completed. So we have plenty of time to get engaged, be connected, 
and, and then build those relationships with our estimating team, which we always highly suggest. Next slide, please. Again, some more uh, key dates and, and bid packages. Uh, you, again, you'll have this information readily available, uh, but this is some good information so you can set your schedule to see if it's in line with any current procurements that you currently have uh, in your pipeline. Next slide, please. Scopes of work for early procurement. So these have been either already contract or in the process of being contracted. So if you have any of these services available, it still probably wouldn't be a bad idea to reach out to uh, Jay, uh, it's Jared Lohman for this particular project and, and see if these opportunities are still available or how you can support them if you do provide those services. Uh, next slide, please. Some follow up uh, bid packages for this particular procurement, uh, division one earthwork, uh, things of that nature. And then, you know, your division threes and your fours uh, for your concrete and your metal uh, and steel, pro uh, steel packages. Next slide, please. And again, this is the point of contact senior estimator, Jared Lohman, uh, who works out of our Chan, uh, Tyson's corner office. Uh, he will be the procurement officer or lead uh, senior uh, senior estimator uh, over this project and reach out to him anytime you need. Next slide, please. HRO, uh, this is in Prince George's County. So this is going to be on Pensy Drive and Veterans Parkway over in that area. And I believe it's directly across from the Carmen Tucker training facility. If, you, if you're familiar with uh, that area of Prince George's County, this is where that project will be. Uh, we will have uh, additional WMATA requirements for this as well. Uh, next slide, please. It'll be similar just to the, the Bladensburg bus garage project when it comes to certification, prevailing wages, uh, things of that nature. Uh, here are some of the details about this particular uh, project. 375 square foot shop and office building with 12,000 linear feet of track work for this project. Next slide, please. Again, some of the bidding requirements. Uh, next slide. Some important bidding opportunities and dates uh, that you'll be able to refer to either in the slides or the PDF that will be provided to you. Uh, next slide, please. Scopes of work uh, for early first quarter. If you have any of these services, uh, please reach out to the senior estimator whose information will be provided at the end of this uh, particular section. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. As you can see, we, we cover everything. Uh, so hopefully in, in some form or fashion, uh, you'll be able to find an opportunity uh, that fits your, your current services provided. Uh, and if you are WMATA certified, again, uh, please let us know about that. Next slide, please. Um, we, we're having a question here. Will the small business subcontractor be required to comply with FAR and our DFAR compliances? Or are the opportunities only non-government awards? So um, for yours, the, the only government awards that we have will be in the later uh, sections for our uh, Fort Meade projects. Uh, these particular projects, these are private projects. So FARs will not be applicable uh, for the NIH campus projects or the WMATA projects, but they will be applicable to our uh, ECB and our uh, Fort Meade projects. And we'll discuss that when we get to that section. Thank you, David. Um, just real quick, too, are drones used in your work? Um, we've have used drones before. Uh, it depends on the campus, right? You know, we're in DC, uh, so there are a lot of different drone requirements. But I'm sure if you're a drone operator, you are aware of, of those requirements or restrictions, uh, depending on you know your flight path or, or where you're at in proximity to to Washington DC. Um, we haven't turned down an opportunity to look at it or had the conversation. Uh, so if you do have those services, uh, we would be more than likely to uh, entertain those discussions. Nothing, nothing opposed with using technology. We actually fly drones ourselves. Uh, it's just tricky in this market. Uh, so we haven't done it here, but as a company, uh, we do have certified drone pilots uh, that are uh, em HP employees. So we, we understand the, the value that drones do bring either from a, 
uh, a surveying standpoint or even final uh, final production footage uh, to hand over to our owner about the, the end uh, product. Thanks for that answer, David. You have a couple of minutes left uh, in your presentation. Okay. Next, 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 next. Slide, 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 slide. Go, 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 go. All right. So now we're getting into our, our federal projects. Uh, so East Campus Building 4. Now we've been on Fort Meade's campus for multiple projects, uh, probably at least five of them. So uh, we know the campus very well. Uh, we know the client very well. Uh, so if you are interested in working on the, the Fort Meade campus for this particular opportunity, uh, please make sure that you review the requirements uh, right here um, and then be able to reach out to our estimator for this project. It's gonna be very little information because this is still in the procurement phase. We haven't won this project yet. Uh, it's still being bid out to other uh, major general contractors, but this is a project that we are pursuing. Next slide, please. And Mr. Woodling will be the point of contact for this project. Next slide. Uh, this is another project on that Fort Meade campus, the RCR slash MF project, uh, record center replacement and mercury floor project. Uh, some basic details about this particular project. Again, this is still in the bidding phase. And for this particular project, we will have a standalone outreach to discuss the specifics about this project on July 22nd. Uh, we'll be sending out those notifications probably after the, the 4th of July holiday. Uh, so make sure that uh, either you put your contact information in the chat or we have it somewhere available through the information, through your registration information, so we can add your, your names and your details to that solicitation list when we do send out uh, that marketing material for this particular outreach event. Next slide, please. Uh, this will be the point of contact. Uh, if you wanted to get some details on it prior to this event, uh, Mr. Troy Rector will be the senior estimator responsible for overseeing this project. Next slide, please. We are teaming with MC Dean and Southland. So if you are division 15 or 16, you know, electrical mechanical, if you have any relationships with any of these two major contractors, uh, please reach out to them uh, and see what type of opportunities do lie uh, within their company, because we do have trickle down uh, participation requirements that they will be responsible for as well. A lot of our larger uh, mechanical uh, packages are, they can range anywhere from five to $15 million. Um, and that's really not in the scope of a smaller uh, mechanical or electrical contractor, uh, but there are opportunities to either be a supplier, a vendor, you know, uh, debundling opportunities to get a smaller chunk of the, those of those larger MEP contracts. Uh, so please make sure that you uh, utilize the resources who are also team members for that project. Uh, next slide, please. And you'll see some of their contact information here. So just some additional resources to reach out to, uh, to kind of put another arrow in your quiver uh, when you are trying to find opportunities to work with Hensel Phelps. Next slide, please. So to wrap it all up, you know, some final tidbits, you know, in addition to uh, what Ms. Uh, uh, Tyra mentioned, you know, always get a debrief. You know, if you're not in a successful awardee of a project, you know, it's very valuable to get that feedback of where you didn't, Meet the meet the meet the meet the requirements, you know. So get a debrief is very valuable information. Make sure you're certified. If you're not certified, you know, take those steps to to do it. It, it pays out in the end. Um, make sure that you consider uh, the opportunities with Hensel Phelps in our trade part or our resources, and then always maintain you know positive and open lines of communication. Uh, that's how you win. Stay persistent. You might not get the first opportunity, but if you stay persistent and stay connected, then they're going to be an opportunity for you that fits your, your procurement model and, your, and where you want to take your company. So just stay engaged with us and we'll always be here to support you. Uh, next slide, please. Here's my contact information. If you ever need any resources, if you need any updates on projects, if you need any updates on any uh, bids that you submit, you know, you can always utilize me as a resource in addition to the estimators that you've been working with for those projects. So uh, thank you all for letting me speak. Thank you all for taking the time to be interested in Hensel Phelps opportunities. And I look forward to hearing from you and working with you in the very near future. I think that's my time. Thank, <laughs> thank you, David. That was very thorough. And I love seeing all those examples of real life opportunities coming up. That's really invaluable. 
to our clients. So thanks again. And we're going to move swiftly on to our final speaker, um, who is Susan Castellan. He, she is the Vice President of Whiting Turner Contracting uh, Company. So welcome, Susan. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to say uh, David and, and Tyra did an outstanding job, and there's going to be some duplication here. Um, next click, please. Um, just to give you a little bit of background um, on Whiting Turner, we were founded in 1909. <clears throat> Next slide, please. I'm going to try to move very quickly through here because, like I said, many of the stuff, many of the things that were expressed by both Scanscan and Hems are very common to what we do as well. There's some variations, um, but we'll, I'll try to hit on those in particular. But to give you some background on Whiting Turner, we've been around for 112 years. Our focus is really on customer relationships, and we have quite a bit of repeat business. And um, the way we do that is we perform well and the customer wants to kind of take us along to their next project. So um, that's that's sort of the way we've grown our business over the years. And in order to do that, we need to train and keep our staff. And so, um, for instance, I've been with Whiting Turner for 37 years. I started right out of college. Um, I'm currently a vice president um, running an operating group out of our DC office in Greenbelt, which sounds a little bit ironic. Um, and in some ways it is, but in many ways it's very perfect for us. Um, the, one of the key things about Wedding Turner that makes us a little different, I think, from Skanska and um, Hensel Phelps is we're decent, very decentralized. And that unfortunately makes it very challenging for subcontractors. But just to, I'll talk about that a little later in the future slides. In our history, we've only had three presidents. We, the current one has only been um, the president of our company for seven years. So the last one was 65 years our president. So we have a very deep culture um, in leadership and how we do our business. Um, we have, we do um, 4 billion in bonding capacity. We're about a 10 billion plus company um, per year. We only work nationally. We do not work internationally at all. Um, we have 50 branch offices across the country, more than 50 offices currently, and that's how we grow basically. Is we plant a flag in a new market. Um, when there's work there, we plant a flag and we open an office. Our corporate office is in Baltimore. Um, we have a, a 5A1 um, rating for DMV and no debt. Since 1938, I believe, we have had zero debt. Um, next page, please. The decentralized structure, I'm re-emphasizing that, that's going to become really important for you. We have about 150 operating groups. I'm an operating group, um, and I, I run a group of people that's about um, 38 people in the D.C. office. And each operating group is almost like a small company, and we pursue the type of work that we want to pursue. And as long as we're profitable, we continue to pursue it. So 150 of these are operating across the country. They're like mini construction companies with a big umbrella of Whiting Turner over top of them. And it's led by either a vice president or senior project manager. Um, our project managers are really the driving force of the procurement. So that's going to be important um, going forward at, for you to understand. Next slide, please. So next slide, procurement and subcontracting. This is what we're all about here today. So it's our project managers on every project um, that gets involved in developing the bid list, and we do it through Building Connected too. So that Building Connected piece that you heard from Hensel Phelps and Skanska is really important that if you are not um, um, enrolled in that, please do it. And as was pointed out, there is no cost to the subcontractor. So um, please fill that out and make sure that you're, um, you're connected on it and enrolled. Um, there's invitations to bid that go out through Building Connected. Um, depending on the project, there's different levels of prequalification. Sometimes it's um, a client required prequalification. Sometimes it's a Whiting Turner one. If you've got a history with Whiting Turner, um, the prequalification is a little um, less formal. Um, the bid packages are scoped and, and, and put together by our project teams who often have worked through pre construction and then do the procurement and then actually work through construction. So we have the same team all the way through the process. They then receive the bids and review them, and then we make recommendations for award out of those bid reviews. And those bid reviews often are sit down meetings with our subcontractors to make sure that they have scoped and included all the um, scope items um, completely. Um, so that's where we do like the bid leveling so that we're looking at apples to apples when, before we do an award or make a recommendation for award. Next slide, please. 
So how to get a bid invite is really the hardest part. Because we're decentralized, it's not like you can call our our, our um, estimating department or our procurement department because we don't we don't have that for the, the bid opportunities. We, we, we have to actually find the project team and we try to help you um, do that. But um, so the key is you've got to get connected with the project team um, and using building connected, as you can see here, it's free, free account set up for um, the subcontracting community. We have um, outreach events on a, on a regular cadence throughout the year. We have six of them every year. Um, and we share the responsibility with Baltimore because Baltimore and Washington is sort of a merged area, sort of. So we, Northern Virginia, DC, you know, like the DMV area and Baltimore do these get down to business events six times a year. And three of them are up in Baltimore and three of them are in the uh, DMV and we alternate. So, um, you know, the next one is going to be in August and uh, I'll be sending an invite out once we set the date on that, probably in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then the following one after that will be in October and that will be in um, Baltimore. Um, so it's like every two months and it's alternating locations. Um, and we've been doing them virtually through um, COVID. One of these days I'm hoping that we're back in person because I think it's a much better way of connecting with the project teams. Um, it's worked virtually, um, but I don't think it's quite as good. The advantage is you don't have to drive and find parking. So there's, there's the plus side to the virtual. <laughs> Um, the next slide, please. Pre-qualification. These are some of the things that are important when we look at the pre-qualifications. Um, obviously, licensing, if you have a diversity certification, that's important. Um, financial strength. Bonding capacity depends on the size of the bid that you're going to make. So, um, similar to um, Hensel Phelps, there's, a, there's an amount that we require bonding after. Um, and depending on how important your scope of work is to the project, we sometimes lower that amount, but corporately we have a limit and then we have project limits, depending on if the owner has requirements as well. Safety record is very important. Um, safety is important, obviously, and it's always a challenge on a job. If you have, a, you know, anyone that's being unsafe, that's just not acceptable. Um, and then once you start working with Weddington, or once you get your, your first job and you start building a reputation with us, that's how your, your information gets spread through other project teams in many ways. So it's really important that you select the right project for you. Next, um, next slide, please. So these are some of the challenges. I, I don't want to call them pitfalls, but I, we're going to say challenges and pitfalls. Make sure, and I think um, I think Tyra hit these pretty good um, when she was talking. I, it was very much what I had. Make sure that you understand um, the requirements of the project. Um, make sure you read through them, and make sure that you you're um, compliant with all of them. And you're able to be compliant because the last thing you want to do is pick up a project, the first one out of the box, and then not do well. We want you to do well, but you got to help us make sure that you're uh, the right fit for this. So we don't want, um, we don't want you to have egg on your face and to, um, cause it's harder to recover from that. We want you to perform well. Um, make sure that you submit as full a proposal as you can. Next slide, please. Understand the scope that you're proposing on. Make sure that you're really clear if there's some gray areas ask questions. Um, if, if for some reason you're, you've got to exclude one part of the scope, make it very clear that you've excluded it. Um, I think Tyra mentioned this, if something's excluded, we're gonna need to backfill it and plug it with a, um, with a budget or something, or, or get another number um, from another sub. So if, if you cannot possibly include one piece of the scope, you've gotta make it very clear so that we understand what is included. Um, and check and recheck your estimate. The last thing we want is a bid to come in and then two hours after you give us the bid and we've submitted our bid to the client, um, you say, oops, I had a math error. Could you please change my bid number? Um, that's, that's not good. So be really um, sure of your bid when you're, you're putting it in. Um, next number, please. Next slide, sorry. Um, Make sure you hit the deadline again. If it's a, if it's a hard bid situation, the deadline is usually 
close to the deadline that we have to submit. So if you miss by an hour, you may miss an opportunity. So make sure you hit the deadlines um, plan in advance to make sure that you can hit the deadline. Um, also, I, I want to add this. This is really kind of important. Um, if you if you say you're going to bid initially and you find yourself in a situation where you're not going to be able to submit a bid, let us know as soon as possible. When we're expecting a lot of bids, we're looking for those bids. We want to be able to do comparisons. We want to check the scoping and stuff. It's a professional thing to do if you know you're not going to be able to submit a bid after you said you had to let us know that you're not going to submit a bid. So we're not going to hold it against you, especially if you tell us, you know, a week in advance, because if we're short on bidders, we're going to try to shake some trees and get some more bidders out there. But if if you're not going to bid, please let us know. Um, we'd rather you um, decline and tell us than you know, just decide internally that you're not going to bid and then just ignore telling us. That's it, it's just something we would like to know. Next slide, please. And then this is um, we're getting uh, close to the end here. So be selective in the pursuits you're going after. Make sure it really is fitting um, your capabilities. I, the you don't want to. Stretch yourself to the point where you're not going to be successful on a project. We want you to grow and stretch, but do it in a, in a, in a um, methodical and a um, properly timed manner so that you're growing at an appropriate rate. Um, sometimes that means that you team with a larger company or you um, joint venture with another subcontractor so that your capacity is, is grown through the teaming efforts. Um, Always reinforce the relationships that you develop. So let's say you pick up a small job with a project manager in Whiting Turner, and um, that job ends. It was a great job. You did well. We did well. The project manager had no issues with you. Keep in touch with that project manager. I think Tyra mentioned this as well. That project manager is going to grow his career in Whiting Turner. He's soon going to be a vice president. If you followed him, you're you're going to grow with him and he's going to continue bringing you opportunities when you do well for us. So we, when you're successful, we're successful. It's a great relationship to continue to build. And this is also something that, um, that I think David mentioned, you're going to get frustrated because you didn't get all, you didn't get the jobs you thought you were going to get sometimes. Be patient and persevere. We do not get all the jobs that we think we should get either. <laughs> Just so you know, it can be very frustrating for us as well. But that being said, if you if you're persistent and you're patient and you and you seek the jobs that really fit your capacity um, and your uh, capabilities, you will be successful eventually. And we just like we want to build relationships with clients and uh, design teams, we also want to build relationships with our subcontracting community um, and particularly the um, MBE. There's get down to business events. Um, next slide, please. I want to make sure you have our contact information. Those get down to business events are not for the whole subcontracting community. They're specifically for um, uh, diversity certified companies. So small, women owned, veteran owned, um, minority businesses. Um, those people that are certified in those capable in those um, categories are the ones that are we outreach to for those get down to business events. And there are also project specific events, um, like, for instance, the Virginia Tech um, Innovation Campus that we're going to be doing um, and that starts this year. And our GMP 1 was out. Hopefully some of you were on our um, list for some of the early packages there, but that package for that um, contract, for instance, is having specific um, outreach events as well as participating in our get down to business events. So you're going to see multiple opportunities to get connected to our project teams. Um, what I'm going to encourage you to do is if you want to get on our invite list for the get down to business, um, which will also get you access to some of the individual um, project um, um, outreach events. The contact information there, if you send, um, send me your information, I will be happy to um, add you to the list. If you would like the list of projects that we um, uh, profiled in our June event, I'll be happy to send that as well if you want to send me your information. Um, and Joey Harmon is sort of my counterpart in Baltimore. She does um, a lot of the outreach in Baltimore and participates in that. And that's that's my... Uh, thumbnail sketch of Whiting Turner and how to get connected. So I'm uh, any questions? Thanks. 
Thank you, Susan, and thank you all to all the speakers for a fantastic uh, event. Um, lots of information, and I know that you will all be eager to look at these PowerPoints because I am going to be sending them out in the next few minutes. So I appreciate you staying all to the end. I know we went slightly over, but I think it was worth it. Um, any, I'm just scrolling through the chat box to see if there's any questions that we missed out on. Uh, one was to work at Fort Me, do I need security clearance? Um, anybody on here that that knows that answer can jump in. Yes. Okay. You there will you be go. required to go through background checks to get on that campus. All right, great. There, nice. there are no drones allowed on that project. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Thank you, David, for that. Uh, the next question is. My company provides uniforms and safety wear. Are there any opportunities for my company? So I'm not sure who that was directed to, but if there's anybody that has any opportunities for safety wear, I'd like to, to speak up. Or yes, uniforms? we're always looking for that. So you can send me an email if you if you want to. Okay. That's great. Well, thank you. I don't see any other questions in the chat box, so I guess we can wrap things up. As I said, I'm going to send you the slides. Please uh, review them again in your own time. And if you have follow up questions, you have all their contact information on there. Um, we will be sharing the replay. It will probably take uh, a, probably a couple of hours for me to get that up on our YouTube channel. So I will also send you the link to that so you can rewatch it. Um, I'd like to thank all our speakers. We really do appreciate everything that you do for the small business community. I'd like to thank our partners at Prince George's County EDC for being fabulous partners. And I'd also like to give a little shout out to our student assistant, Michael Dixon, who has been working behind the scenes, supporting me, live tweeting. Um, and also he's getting to learn a, a great deal about how to do these types of events. So thanks everybody. Um, we hope to see you again very soon at a future Maryland PTAC event. Again, if you need help with any of your procurement issues, your PTAC counselor is waiting to help you. Just register on our website. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Excellent program, everybody. Thank you.